Hey everybody, welcome back. It's Sports with Mono and Mono. It's July 3rd, which is obviously the day before the holiday we should certainly never forget the freedoms that we have in this country, July 4th. That is correct. Welcome back to our show, everybody. And I'm, I'm, I'm like I said, we, Steve and I chomp at the bit all week. We've got a lot of stuff to cover here, so uh, in a short period of time. But I just wanted to say, like I said, July 4th is very special to us. If you know sports with Mono and Mono, you know we're history guys. And yes. the George Washingtons and all the people that gave those sacrifices. Crispus Attucks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you. Joseph Plum Martin from uh, Connecticut. Joseph you know? Plum Martin. <laughs> He's, he, he was in every battle, this kid from Connecticut. He was awesome. Right. But we, anyway. We just, love this stuff. And we, we wish you all a very... Safe and happy July 4th weekend as we kind of get back to normal. Right. And, and um, I can't wait, obviously, for tomorrow. You know, Joey Chestnut will be defending his title. You well, know. we were going to cover that later. Yeah, but... Uh, <laughs> Worth noting. I'm just so excited about it. <laughs> I don't see anybody beating him. I'm busting, Jerry. I'm busting. <laughs> going to break his uh, record from last year, 75. 75. Dog. And buns, by the way. Yes. <laughs> buns included. Wet buns. <laughs> oh, that, that looks nasty. I'd rather just eat them regularly. Right. But anyway, before we move on, again, I want to I wanna give a shout out to our sponsor, Coriano Trucking from Summer Hill, New York. And uh, they've been with us all along, and they're sponsoring Steve's monologue, and I'll turn it over to him. Thank you, Jim. My monologue today is kind of like a sequel to your last week's monologue. So I gave it a lot of thought, and uh, because of you know this name likeness image uh, aspect of what uh, college sports is going to be all about going forward, I was trying to wrap my head around it and just you know try and understand what it means and so on and so forth. So this week, just reading about it, the easiest way to describe this, I think, for our audience and for me, was reading. There's a basketball player on Iowa. And you know what he's doing tomorrow? He's going to the local hardware store in Iowa. And he's going to be sitting behind a desk signing autographs for kids. And guess what? He's going to get paid for that appearance. And I think that's the most simplistic way to describe what this means. Okay? It's also a boon for agents. Right? So... Fresno State has a pair of twins, girls. They're attractive, blonde, blue-eyed type of thing. You know what they did during the middle of the week? They flew to New York at the invitation of a company that wants them to represent this company. And guess what? They're going to get paid an awful lot of money. And now what does that mean? They'll have lawyers, they'll have agents, and so on and so forth. So I think it's the simplistic way to describe the name, likeness, image. They're going to be no different than when we were kids and Bucky Dent was uh, you know, at a card show in Pompton Lakes, which is the town over, yeah. getting paid for an appearance. Yeah. Now, is every college athlete going to have this opportunity? No, they're not. Okay? But it's for the... A lot of them are. And that's kind of where I think, because I got a lot of questions about it this week and trying to explain it. But to me, that's the most simplistic way. And just to finish as well, we talked about Reggie Bush a couple weeks ago and the College Hall of Fame. So Reggie Bush, obviously, is back in the news. You know why? Because Reggie wants his Heisman Trophy back. And guess what? The Heisman Committee yesterday said if the NCAA, right, rescinds, et cetera, et cetera, my point is, fast forward, Reggie Bush is getting his Heisman Trophy back. I will guarantee you that's going to happen. We're living in a society type of thing where, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So okay. I just wanted to piggyback on your monologue from last week, and I think I have a better full grasp of, you know, what this means. I do too, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad that you brought it up because it did change since, since we talked about it was possibly going to happen, and now it's actually happened. And you know what? I don't have a problem with the guy sitting at a bagel shop in Iowa making a couple, mo- couple bucks. Um, but should Reggie Bush get his thing? No, because that's not what the law was then. So <laughs> you don't get your Heisman back. You know, if you lived in today's day and age, you would, but you don't. Um, I, you know, 
That's all I'm saying. But here was an interesting thing that I saw. And you know what? I think you and I could have saw this coming. There's already been a couple of guys, uh, prominent NCAA athletes that have formed their own agency, that, right? So they're exactly. going to subcontract Very, this, and they're going to get a piece of all of that. That is correct. And that's a brilliant move on their part. Absolutely. But you're right. It's going to be flooded with... But as long as it doesn't influence where somebody goes, you can't give the guy the Porsche to come to your school. That's that's the fine line that we're walking on this topic. Oh, correct. And, and we beat it to death, but I'm glad you brought it up. Good monologue. Very good monologue. Well, let's move into some, some actual sports that are happening in the NBA. But let me just say one, one other thing about that, to your point. The real-life example of these kids forming their own companies and corporations as opposed to hypothetically turning in a, ter a term paper of, of we want to do this, we want to do this hypothetically. And now it's real life experience. Yeah. And they're making real dough, going to do it. So I think that's a good thing. I agree. I agree. So let's touch base. Uh, the NBA playoffs, um, winding down, as they say. And um, listen, I, I got to still give a shout out. And if Trey Young could have played... He would have played. He's that kind of guy. And Giannis got hurt. So, you know, there's, there's some big names that have missed games. Chris Paul with the Suns. But I got to tell you, Steve, the Suns look really, really good. I agree. And I don't see them losing to whoever wins, the I, Hawks or the Bucks. I know? agree. I agree. Um, it's unfortunate for the Clippers that Kawhi Leonard yep. uh, was injured. But uh, time. Them, them's the... Uh, Them's, them's the breaks. Them's the breaks. And, uh, you know, Paul, Paul George stepped up, I got to say. He did. I got to say. It, say. But he did have to say at, at the end, you know, if if we had Kawhi, well, Paul, you did. Okay? We got So, yep. but to your point, I think the Suns look formidable. They do. Um, I, I have to give Brooke Lopez credit. Credit. You know, the guy's nine feet tall, makes $20 million or whatever he does. But this was a performance where your superstar is out. You got to win this game. <laughs> Trey Young, you know, it, it helped that Trey Young wasn't playing. But I do want to acknowledge he stepped up and was instrumental in this one. And it's so funny you brought that up because I heard this uh, during one of the NBA broadcasts that Brooke Lopez is the Nets' all-time leading scorer. I can I can say it. You could have seen that. I could. I mean, he played for probably ten years. I know, match. but all-time leading scorer. <laughs> he wouldn't have been even been on my list behind you know Dr. J and all these guys. Durant. Or I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have even have thought of Julius Serving because he only played three years or so. I, I know, right? But, but he, this kid Lopez, is a lunch pail kid, and he really did step up. Right. You're right, you know. I would say my first guess probably would have been Super John Williamson or something. <laughs> Michael Ray Richardson. Yeah. Right? Another guy you could nah. have put up there. Yeah. Uh, but I, I would have said like Super... Super. Albert King. <laughs> right? Albert yeah. King would have been a good guess, no doubt. Yeah. No doubt. That's a very good guess. Yeah. But the NBA, that's moving along. Um, but like I said, I to me, the Suns look like they could take this. You know, first it'll be the first in, in franchise history, right? Yeah. Correct, but Giannis, should they advance, should be ready to play. Here's a little uh, little trivia fact off, off the cuff. The last time the, the Bucks won an NBA championship, it was coached by Larry Costello by Correct. way of Niagara University. Yes. Hey, hey, it is what it is. Top of my head, 1970, <laughs> I think it was. 70 or 71. 70, 70 71 like season. Yep, yep. But that's it's been it's been pretty good, but it's winding now. We'll finally get to the files. It's been a long season in the NBA. Yep. But the N NHL, how about this? You're lightning. You were dead solid perfect on this one. Uh, they are a machine. And they are rolling. a machine. And yeah, listen, uh, Le Les Habs <laughs> may get a victory in Montreal. I wouldn't be surprised if they do. Tampa and them would come home, yep. but they are going to hoist the Stanley Cup. Even if the <coughs> Canadians will win one game, I think. I, I, win I, one game. I, I would hope so for the Montreal fans. There hasn't been a shutout in the NHL finals since 1998. Yeah, that's cool. Right? But they are a machine. Yep. And it's during the week at work, again, for the audience, I, I work with a guy, Frankie, who's you know, 32 and, and loves hockey, diehard Ranger fan, and we talk sports all, you know, 
throughout the week. And I, I just randomly asked him, top of my head, I said, how old Steven Stamkos, by the way? 36, 37? He says he's 31. Yeah. I said, are you kidding? I said, really? And my point being is, How not they- only are they loaded, they may actually, because they got this nucleus in place, they may pull an Islanders and could conceivably win four in a row. Wow, that's a bold I thing. think they're going to, they're very... I think John Cooper's a great coach. I do too. Way. They could possibly, definitely, well, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Yep. Three... But yeah, I I was confident that back, pretty that good. back to back. Uh, was I actually happen. got some feedback from one of my listeners, Eric Calenti. He was talking about. It. He goes, "Boy, you guys have been tooting and and howling on the Tampa Bay Lightning, or at least your brother has." I said, "Hey, it's it's coming to fruition here. I mean, right. rightfully so. But you're right. They they have the potential with the nucleus. They could possibly. I wouldn't rule this out four years. Yeah." You know? And listen, you know, this Nikita Kucherov, you know, Stud. historic. I mean, he, he he's back-to-back seasons with 30-plus points in the in the playoffs. And did not win the Vezina Trophy, actually. Correct. Which is but crazy. there's only two guys in history have done it, the great one and Mario. Yeah. And now Kucherov, you know, yeah. that that's pretty good company, man. Yeah. So they, they, congratulations to them. They're on a roll. But before we move off hockey, we've got to give a shout-out. Um Connor McDavid won his a unanimous MVP, and we talked about him before. We love this guy, and he is good. So he wins the MVP, and Adam Fox wins the Norris Trophy. I'm glad you brought league, that up defenseman. because, uh, <laughs> listen, did I see this coming? Uh-uh, right? Adam Fox, second year, wins yep. the Norris. Right? And I, and I got to tell and, you. And not just let me finish. Joint select company, kind of like Kucherov I just mentioned. Yep. Bobby Orr and Brian Leach are the only two other players. To win it at that age, right? To win it in their second year. Wow. That's pretty cool. And Adam Adam Fox is 23 years old. And I, listen, I'm I'm a Ranger fan and I've watched him. I just didn't see it. Maybe I just wasn't, he he wasn't the Bobby Orr dominating type, but, you know, of course, across the league and his peers and coaches and everybody else. He's a great, great player. I just didn't see him because I was, you know what? Because I was focused on watching Panarin and and the offense because I I like that guy. But when you look at the numbers, Fox led all defensemen with assists. And only second year in the league. Yeah. Amazing stuff. And the kid's from Jericho, New York on the island, uh, which is good. And uh, he's a Harvard man, too. (laughs) Yes, he is. (laughs) So he's smart. (laughs) Very smart. (laughs) And you know what? You know who I think he's going to be playing with next year? Jack Eichel. From the, sounds like they're working <laughs> on a deal. It sounds like he needs a home and well, it's I, not going I, to be I, in Buffalo. I've been reading sure. a lot about this. and uh, They like him. Eichel had, had a press conference about two weeks ago, right? He's not happy in Buffalo, and everybody knows it. Eichel, would be. Would Eichel's be, would be. a BU guy, right, like I am, and, and Drury and so on and so forth. Yeah. However... It's a king's ransom to get him. But we shall see if Drury really wants him, we're getting him. Yeah. And, and Jack Eichel obviously would want to play for the Rangers. Of course. Is it going to happen? I can't say yes or no. I'm going to say but, yes. But, that, say yes. but Drury is, is working on it. And if it makes sense. No, Gerard Gallant is working on it. Both of them are. Both of them are. <laughs> okay. If he wants him, then he'll get him. I want him, but it depends on the package, Agreed. right? Just wanted to but I would give up like a Buchnevich and, uh, you know, a high pick and, and so on and so forth. I mean, Buffalo. They're going to want Zabanajad, though, or somebody like that. That's that's what's going to be the stumbling block. Can you give away one of well, those? Well, I think the other factor, too, is, uh, you know, the, the Kraken start playing this year. So the expansion draft is going to happen. So we're going to lose... We're gonna lose a couple guys. I yeah, mean, but we're not gonna lose like a, you know. No, we're gonna protect. Guys. We're gonna protect the top guys, but yeah. but we we'll probably lose like a Brett Howden or something like that. Yeah, it could be a Ryan Strom, something like that. Right. Okay. Yeah. But so I think that factors into the assets that we have when it comes to the Eichel deal. Yeah. But hockey is you know like I said it's winding down too so it's, it's oh yeah and what does that mean we're moving into. Focusing on Major League Baseball with the Subway Series happening today. You know, disappointing. Both the Yankees and the Mets 
with these star-studded lineups, you know, tied with 41 wins, you know, so far in the season. We're only halfway done, but I wanted to bring it up because I, I, I got a chance to watch this kid. He didn't have a great outing, obviously. Showtime. Yeah, I love this kid. I do too. <laughs> I love it. He hit two home runs last night. You know, he's got thirty in the season. Despite the pitching performance at Yankee Stadium, exactly. I'm putting that aside. I'm you, just saying when the you impact look, when you had. look at him at the plate, you see special. Yep, I see special. Me too. And the home runs that he hit at Yankee Stadium <laughs> were it, good it, exit velocity. It, it <laughs> felt like a wiffle ball game. Yeah. Okay. This kid is special. He is special. He's got 30 already. and um, But they're going to wear him, wear him down. He shouldn't be in this home run derby, although it's great for baseball, great for the I All-Star game. I think he game. should. I mean, the kid is 20 something. I know, but notoriously these guys. Plus, it's at Coors Field, which is going to be an absolute joke. Even I could hit a home run in Coors it, Field. It, right? It's going to be an absolute joke. But I think this is a great joke. thing for Major League Baseball, and it was great to have him, you know, in New York and, you know, a packed house kind of thing. Yeah. He's a real special player. Man. Yeah, he, he, he is, really is. No question. Fastest uh, guy in Angels history to get 30 home runs. And they've had some pretty, uh, you know, yeah. pretty good guys in there. But that's. I just think, you know, this is going to ultimately take its toll. And, you know, uh, he got knocked out in the first inning, and usually oh. Madden puts him in right field after that. But, but, but back to that game. I mean, the state of the Yankees is so bad, right? They score seven runs in the first inning and give up seven runs in the ninth but inning. They'll rebound. They'll, they'll, yes, they'll win the, their 98 they, games. No, they are not. Yeah, they will. They stink. They're gonna, they're, the culture stinks. I'm not saying I know they there's ma- not a lot of blame Listen, to go I know they made this big deal this week to get Tim LaCastro from the Diamondbacks. That's a non-factor. That's- of course it's a non-factor, but that's the point I'm trying to say is we got Tim LaCastro. You know what Tim LaCastro was batting? A buck 74. He'll fit right in. But you- oh, but, he, but he's fast. He can steal bases. But it wrote, doesn't matter. I, we, we had an exchange with our one of our loyal listeners, James Walsh, and we were talking about it. how does Rugnet Odor have a job in the major leagues? I mean, that's the kind of thing you have to say. That's missing the boat, right? Gardner hitting 200 <laughs> and these other guys. So they got many problems, um, but they're going to win games, just like the Mets are going to win games. They'll split this weekend series and... We'll uh, let me say one other thing, and I give Michael K all the credit. You know, I was listening to him on my way home from work. No, actually, it wasn't K. It, it was Chris Mad Dog Russo. They played a blip of what he said, and I couldn't agree agreed more. He was crushing Aaron Boone about resting Aaron Judge when Otani was going to pitch. I heard it. When we knew it was going to possibly be rained out the next game. I heard it. I mean, come on. I mean, that was spot on. Spot on. Agreed. Agreed. It, it, th- I, I heard it Things too. are so bad in Yankee land, I can't even yep. describe it. Yep. And no, they're not going to win 98 games. Don't be ridiculous. I think it's going to turn around, but uh, they're not going to win the World Series. <laughs> we haven't won the World Series since 2009. I'm familiar with it. 2021. I'm it, familiar it, with it. We're not winning the World Series. But listen, my point is we're coming up to the All-Star break, which is the halfway point of the Major League season, and uh, I just really got to shout out for this Otani. I, I think it's awesome. I really do. Right. I think it's awesome. Right. And he, you know, he could have played for the Yankees. The Yankees offered him the money. He didn't. He, he, didn't he, wanted, want he wanted to play on the West Coast. He did. Good stuff, though. Um, NFL, really nothing to talk about, but there is one thing I'm going to talk about related to the NFL going forward. But it's Wimbledon, and uh, I watched Roger the other day. He looks pretty good. And you're Gosh. right. He's rapidly approaching his 40th birthday, and from a from a Wimbledon perspective, it, it kind of sucks that, that Nadal's not playing and so forth, but I, I don't see Jokovic losing this thing. Uh, but it's so cool to see Roger playing, man. It he, is. He, I, I mean, it's Wimbledon. Right? We know it's winding down, but we, we, we love this guy's career. He's nothing but Will class. I be surprised he gets to the final against Jokovic? No. Is he going to beat Jokovic? No. Okay. Right. I mean, there's really not much debate, I think, this year yep. for, for Wimbledon. And on the women's side, you know what? When I saw Serena go down yep. with the injury, 
and the emotion that she, uh, you know, she knew. This was yeah. one of her last chances. Oh, yeah. Kind of yeah. Thing. I and, got it. and I got to say, I never really thought about Serena, like, as the, or appreciated her. Dominance? Yeah. But Dominance. I, I got to say, I got a little, I'm not going to say choked up, but I felt for her. Yeah. Okay? You wouldn't, I, have, I mind, felt, you wouldn't have mind seeing her tie Margaret Cord for the all-time. I, I, I felt know? for her. And, She's uh, going to go down as the greatest women's player of all time, regardless. She already is. You know? I mean, it's not even... At the but you're right. And the, 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 the odd thing about this is it's the first couple times I've, I've actually seen instances, the slippery grass at Wimbledon, you know, so there's a big controversy around whether they were doing it. Because they'd never seen it, and it caused two injuries. The guy who was playing Federer went out with an injury, too. But you all play on the same court, so I get it. I'm not dismissing We've been watching Wimbledon our whole life on grass. Yep. I'm not buying into that. You kidding? No, I'm not saying it's it, like they don't maintain the courts. I'm just saying it's oh, odd. They, that they mow how, the grass. But that's how <laughs> that she goes out with an injury. You know, I would have liked to have seen her go through it. Of know? course. But again, back to her dominance. It, it happens. Yep. You know, I yep. mean. And listen, I'm, I'm still rooting for Coco Goff. Man, I like her. She's you like a real Coco? Nice I do. Love Coco. <laughs> <laughs> Got to love the Coco. <laughs> now, nah, but she's All good. right, George. You can be called Co- George. You're now called Coco the Monkey. <laughs> Good reference. Ah. Very good reference. But the women's side is open. Actually, I don't see anybody beating the number one seed, Barty. She's, no, she's I, rolling. I through, was just gonna know. say that, yep. uh, Barty. But here's a here's a question that something came up. We got an email from one of our listeners, Mike Garvey from Naples, and the question was, Do you think women should get the same pay that the men get? And you know what? Great question. It's a topic we thought about, and we know there's a major disparity between men's and women's sports, right? right up. But I said, you know what? I don't have a problem in the majors because they're going to fill the stadium because people want to see whether it's the men or the women in a major. So, yes. But overall, if you look at the whole thing and say, you know, how, how much money did the men's side generate versus the women, then you could say... You know what? The men are earning a little bit more money because it's it's more watchable, or you know, attend people attend those. But in the majors, I have no problem whatsoever. Good question, Mike. Yeah, Mike, that is a very good, valid question. And uh, uh, should they? Yeah, I would say in the majors, no yeah. question. Yeah. Will they? It's never going to happen. It's never going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Can I give you an answer as to why? Uh, you know. It's just not going to happen. I think I just gave the answer. The right. men are more popular. People would rather see Roger Federer than Michelle Barty or whatever. You know, that's what <laughs> we're bigger, we're faster, we're stronger. Yeah. <laughs> we can rebuild him. We can rebuild him. Yeah. Except so, for the transgender athlete that uh, you know, you know, making the Olympics and things like that, and uh, ha ha. But that's yeah. you know, it's um, unbelievable. <laughs> so let's let's move on. Um, our next segment sponsored Can by... we backtrack real quick? Hold on. Real quick. Go ahead. Because we covered baseball. Yep. I think it's important that we acknowledge the College World Series and Mississippi State. I was going to get to that. Okay, but yep. we were talking Major League Baseball. Go so I, I just wanted to say how great it was for Mississippi State to win their first mm-hmm. national championship in any sport. In any sport. 126 years. It's, a, it, it's, a, it's incredible. And listen, I think both you and I thought that Jack Leiter and, and um, who was the guy? Kumar uh, Rocker. Rocker. Who got rocked. Yeah, they both got rocked. Um, well, Jack, no, Jack didn't get rocked. Kumar Rocker got no, rocked. No, I'm, I'm, I just meant that, that Mississippi State, you're right. That's pretty cool. But of all these years, all of those sports, yeah. the first one. You're yeah. right. That's right. worth noting. You know, they were number one in the country when Dak was there. And listen, I'm a Dak guy. And you know, a lot of people, I think, know now that Dak, you know, Mississippi State guy, and he was at, he was in the College World Series rooting his team on, and yeah, yeah. you know, I I love Dak. Everybody knows that, and I was I, I just I, like so I just too. wanted to acknowledge what a great story it was. Yep. And again, they lost. You know, the finals is 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 a best of three, and Vanderbilt smoked them in game one, and these guys come back, and I think the 
you know, they outscored them 22 to 2 or something like that and, and to win this. So I think it's yep. great. I want to and you know that. what I actually forgot about? And we, you may have mentioned it. I, Jack Leiter's a Jersey kid, went to Del Barton High they School. They did. And I, I forgot about that fact. But And now we got to sweat out because the Red Sox have the fourth overall pick. <laughs> I know. That a lot of, a lot of, he's projected to go to the Red Sox. So <laughs> I'm not happy about that. And we had drafted him. While he was at Del Barton, yeah, but he wanted to go to Vanderbilt and no. understand. I uh, think his father Al would prefer he go to the Yankees than the Red Sox. Wow, well, like, you know, <laughs> but uh, Jack is deserving of, of the, his high uh, yep. selection coming up. Absolutely, but listen, let's move on and, and talk about um, our next topic. But it's sponsored by Lynch Toyota of Manchester, Connecticut, and hope all is well and enjoy, enjoy the Fourth of July to the Lynch family of Toyota and. Thanks, thanks for the support year after year. Thank you, Mike. So I, I got to bring this up because my one of my uh, our loyal listeners, Mr. Cruz, or uh, Diego, our resident soccer expert. But I have been watching Euro 2020, and it's been pretty good. Yeah. But him and I had a conversation yesterday because I watched it, and I've, I brought this up time and time again. These fake injuries is ruining the sport and it, it, it I saw it yesterday the guy was running down the field okay pulled his hamstring whatever but goes down like he was shot right rolling around writhing in pain even even Diego concedes that it's it's something that needs to be remedied in soccer but it's been great listen watching Belgium you know and Italy yesterday it was a great great soccer game and this is coming from, uh, this is sports with Mono and Mono, the elder Mono saying, listen, I get it. It's awesome. I really got turned on with the, the women's soccer gold medal years ago, and it's been very exciting. We, we like watching Messi and, uh, and uh, Ronaldo, Ronaldo and we, it, it's been very, very exciting. But I just wish they would fix that problem about these guys going down because it's tarnishing the game. Yeah, I mean, I don't I, know if you watched any of it, but it's pretty exciting, actually. I mean, Belgium, you know, losing to Italy, that's a big deal across the globe. You know? <laughs> Wouldn't have been as big a deal as if, as if Italy lost to Belgium, I can tell you that. <laughs> no, but that's just it. Belgium's notoriously a, a powerhouse. In I soccer. understand. That's a major upset. In but soccer. if Italy should have lost to Belgium, that is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the ramifications. Now listen, we're down to the semifinals in the in the Euro 2020, and it's pretty exciting. If you get a chance, I, I would recommend watching it. Of course. You know, us from American football say, ah, it looks a little boring, but sometimes the goals, these scores, it, it's a So you're, sell, you're telling me instead of watching a Seinfeld episode <laughs> for the 87th consecutive time? Watch the Euro 2020 <laughs> semifinals. Okay. Right. I'll take it under advisement. I'm not going on record. I don't know who's going to win this. I'm just saying it's pretty exciting, you know. And I love the guy. I, I don't even know the guy's name, the, the announcer for, for those kind of games. He's like kind of the, I want to say John Facenda-like. He's notoriously known for calling these games. Diego sent us an email, let us know who it is, but he's pretty good. His like name him. is Bob Hugh. <laughs> I don't know what his name is. No, it's... <laughs> It's anyway. a year-round name. Yeah. Anyway, so I wanted to bring something up that um, happened last week was the uh, the final of the Travelers Golf Championship on the PGA. Yeah. Eight playoff holes. Yeah, I mean, unprecedented, but it was awesome to watch. And we liked this guy, Harris English, for years, but, you know, it was awesome. What was the guy's name? Kramer. Uh, first name Kramer, last name Hot Chick or whatever it was. Right. Eight playoff holes it was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. <laughs> it really was. <laughs> you know, it was cool. Some guy in England won one point <coughs> nine million dollars. He had like a six sport parlay, something like that. You know, like to, like you're out. Look, the point is one in ten million. Right. Million. Like yeah. England had a win against in soccer. This had to happen. This had to happen. This had to happen. Yep. And Harris English making this putt and it had to happen. <laughs> and the guy won one point nine million. It was awesome. <laughs> it really was exciting to watch. It was great. And it was out in California or whatever, so it was 
you know, weren't going to call it for darkness. Eight playoff yeah, holes. That's cool. Harris English, man, handled himself with, like, he was just focused and, you know, this guy missed it. And coke rack. Or not, not coke rack. I know that. Um, but Harris English, congratulations to him. Sure. That was awesome to watch. Absolutely. Um, and I was <laughs> sad to hear that. DeChambeau and his uh, caddy or Tim they, Tucker, they're having they, some problems. Yeah, they're going to take a little sabbatical from one another. But they'll reunite down the road. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. This is all happening on the verge of you know, the Open Championship is coming up. <laughs> and Hideki Matsuyama tested positive for COVID. Yes, so he, he did. not play. Well, Rom did too. And uh, look what happened to Johnny Rama a month later. Yep. You know, so... Yep. Uh, Listen, the Open's coming up, and uh, it'll be the final major of the year. And, at uh, St. Andrews, I believe. It's, at, it's, it, it's not at Royal Troon this year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the old, the old course, St. Andrews. Right. I couldn't tell St. Andrews uh, from uh, they look alike. Royal <laughs> Troon. To, uh, right, like we can tell the exactly. difference between Torrey Pines and Augusta. It's funny. They're awesome, but the conditions are always wow. brutal. That's that's Lynx golf right it's kinda there. Kind of windy too over there. Hey, that's where <laughs> golf started. <That's, laughs> yeah. Now we live in this beautiful, oh, uh, lush, plush. I got it. Yeah. I got it. But listen, we'll 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 get our uh, Open Championship preview show coming up at the good doings in the PGA. So listen, there's a couple of things that I wanted to bring up, and one thing. And again, it's 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 about the times that are going on and uh, the movements, whatever. But just shocking stuff going on across like sports with um, like the Ohio State doctor, right? The Michigan doctor. This is all coming off the gymnastics, Larry Nasser stuff. It's just Ed Orgeron at LSU. I mean, this guy totally knew that people were filing complaints against these guys, and he buried it. I mean, this is this is the Joe Paterno, Penn State thing all over again, but it's running rampant. The head coach, what's it, Hills, Hillsman at Syracuse Women's, they're going, this guy is just an animal. How are these people <laughs> still running major college sports programs? Isn't it disturbing to you? It's disturbing, but it's... It, listen, I am not surprised anymore. I I'm know. not. It, 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 it's, it's been ongoing... For decades. I know, but why isn't it stopping? Why aren't this coming out? The, I the whole Blackhawks, the Chicago Blackhawks oh, thing. Oh, totally. What is going on here? Right. I mean, people are turning a blind eye to this for years and years, and that's not changing? You know, Mark Bergeron, or Bergeron, is the uh, Canadian's general manager, right? Yeah. And he had a press conference, you know, because his story came out. You know, it was a Chicago Blackhawks player that said he was, you know, sexually abused by blah, blah, blah in the Blackhawks organization. And Mark Bergeron, Bergevin, was in the front office for Chicago at the time. And I'm watching this press conference or reading about it. I didn't see it live. But my first thought is, are you kidding me? You didn't know anything about this? I mean... It's absurd to think that. That's my point. Like, that nobody knew. We talked about the Schembechler thing, but now this yeah. Ohio State. Now a professional team, the Chicago Blackhawks. Right. And they, it just blows me away, and I, I, I hope it stops. And, and then on the flip side, I'm thinking, a hockey player. And then this guy is in the same room with this guy, and this guy does this. My first thought is, why that guy wasn't eight feet through a wall? Well, that's, it, it, the, that's the McQuarrie thing from I, the Penn State situation. I, that's what so I'm talking I'm, about. So I'm, I'm starting to, yeah. you know. And I hope all of these guys... I'm starting to get the, it, I guess, is yeah, right? Yeah. That, because that would be my initial reaction. Of course it doesn't it mean it, somebody else's initial reaction. Because we weren't in the situation. Correct. We get it. But Correct. I just hope that they weed these out. And we locked that door, Gerard. And, you know, we, we thought he's funny and... and witty and won a national championship but if he turned a blind eye to this out you go out you go yeah no. but i also have to look at it too uh, from an ed orgeron's perspective no there's no there's i understand i'm not condoning what I he's doing not. my point is his train of thought is he's in charge of this multi-gazillion dollar Thing. Empire, I correct. Get I get it, and but it's not just ex exactly. Yeah, that's my point. Yep. But I understand why 
he would turn a blind eye, a blind eye to it. And it kills me to say that Bo Schembechler, I would say there's, now there's 99.9% .9 chance. He knew. He knew, okay? Of course he knew. But it was the time and error, and like we talked about it. The Beating Ohio thing. State was more important about a kid coming in and saying the doctor touched my wee wee. Which is crazy. Which is crazy. It's crazy. I, I'm just saying, I just brought it up because it's so rampant, it seems, and I just wish they'd weed these guys out. I, I really do. And then, you know, it gets back to Joe Paterno, right? Which, which we'll never get over. Who, who happened to be the first one that this is exposed about. And, and a lot of people think that Joe Paterno was in the shower, you know, with this guy, right? No. Right? No. He just turned a blind eye to him. Right. Like, because yep. <laughs> the incredulous thought of this, yep. right? Yep. Et cetera, et cetera. And, and listen. And reason, I'm not defending Joe Paterno. Of course you're not. I, and I I'm just trying to make a point that, right? And how about this other thing, this Trevor Bauer story? Oh, just this learned. is disturbing. It is shocking. <laughs> to say the least. And I'm telling you, if I, I talked about it with somebody and I said, wait a minute, I don't care what kind of pitcher this guy is. I don't care anything about But if these allegations are true, not only do you belong at a Major League Baseball, but you belong in jail. This is a violent, violent incident, if proven true. And again, let's, let's yes. give our... our you know, innocent <laughs> and it, and until proven yes, guilty, that, that, and I get it. Right. But it was shocking. Ah. And I, because the funny thing is, I just watched an interview live from the dugout on, like, Sunday night game of the week, and he was talking. I said, you know, God, maybe this guy isn't as big of a jackass as I thought he was. Now, I go, oh, my God, what was I even thinking? Oh, We're God. talking about pine tar versus what this this alleged incident that took place it's it, you can't compare things right you know but it was shocking and i i, I hope it's not <laughs> true but it, it, it uh, looks pretty it true. is so disturbing <laughs> right and yeah. i'm gonna say i actually thought of marv albert for a second <laughs> <laughs> child's play wearing a, you know, a ruffled maid's uniform wearing <laughs> my <laughs> blue chiffon with my matching pumps <laughs> My blue pumps. <laughs> but that's different. <laughs> that's different. I understand, but that was like at the time, like bizarre. Mar Marv had you know, bite marks or something. Okay. This is so disturbing. Yeah. Oh is. my God. Yeah. And, and if it's proven true, oh. I, I didn't want to even think about it, but I wanted he, to bring it they're up. They're going to lock the key. They're, they're throwing the key away. On and him. they should. And, and the 300 and million should. that he signed for. Yep. Um, so there's a couple of, listen, this kind of segment I wanted to bring up, like, not related to specific sports while we're talking about that topic, but I saw a bunch of stuff that happened over the, and you and I have talked about these, so these are like, you know, off-the-cuff topics, right? A Mia Ham card sells for $34,000, right? We talked about baseball cards, right? The Honest Wagners lately. Yeah. That's pretty good. That's cool. Mrs. Gar Garcia Paris card went for thirty four thousand. Always liked her. She was a good role uh, model. Absolutely, Mia you know? Hamm, a, a, a absolute role and model. And if that's who you had to say, and who, she and, and she was Babe Ruth of, of who, that soccer team. Who was the face of soccer? Mia Hamm. Was Mia Hamm. And, and classy girl. Always been awesome. And we we neglected to start our show off because we just missed it. It was Happy Bobby Bonilla Day. Of course, uh, of course it was. <laughs> and I knew I'd get it. I get a text every year from a friend of mine that says Happy Bobby Bonilla Day. I said I already knew. But I'll give credit to Steve Cohen, the Mets owner. Yes, he turned he, he, he's an just, embarrassment into a absolutely. You know? can't hide from this, right? <laughs> <laughs> For the next twenty four years or something. But one point two million is nothing to this 1. guy. One point nine. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> but anyway, congratulations to Bobby Benny. He gets this check until 2035. You better believe it. <laughs> uh, listen, another quick thing out of the blue. Um, a track record was broken. A long time. We're standing for 29 years. Um, the 400 meter hurdles. And when a track record stands for 29 years before it's broken, I think it's notable. So I wanted to mention it. Um, 
some Norwegian, this guy Wolholm. Um, but that's that's pretty interesting. And I always think about records in track and swimming. I'm like, at some point, when is that record going to be unbreakable kind of thing, right? I mean, are they going to be swimming 400 meters and nine seconds at some point? But I thought this was notable from uh, Norway. Norway guy. Okay. Yeah. That's track and field. And track and field is a topic where I wanted to bring up this. Um, Shakara Richardson. She's a sprinter. Fastest woman in the world. 100 meters. Banned from uh, running in this event at, at the Tokyo Olympics Correct. for smoking marijuana. Okay. So somebody brought this up and I said, I think that's ridiculous. A. She is fast, and is it a performance-enhancing drug? No. I mean, but... How would you know? (laughs) (laughs) But somebody said, well, what about something else like the NFL guy? If he's smoking pot before a game, he's got assignments, he's got things to worry about, but she's running 100 meters, fastest thing in the world. She admitted it. She stood up. I got to give her credit. Okay. Then the rules. I'm sorry. I'm not sure exactly, but... I get it. I just don't think it's something to, to shake the world about while they're legalizing Damn the rules. I, I got it. It's as simple as rules that. Rules are rules That's and it. change the rules. That's it. Not sure why she's allowed to run in the 400 uh, meter medley. Right. That sounds a little crazy. Either you're banned or you're not banned, right? You can Understood. buy fruit or you can't buy fruit Correct. from Joe, right? Correct. <laughs> you're banning me? <laughs> you're banned. <laughs> you think I don't know what's going on here? <laughs> Those, <laughs> goes, Those are like... Kramer's peaches. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to bring that up. And, of course, you know, as July 4th weekend in Coney Island, it's the hot dog eating championship, Joey Chestnut. Yeah. You want to talk about the Babe Ruth of, of eating hot dogs? You got to give this guy his kudos, right? Well, of course. You know, I mean, eight all... seventy five last year. Right. You know. I mean, his only challenger is and nobody Bayashi. should. <laughs> <laughs> Who's not? He's not in it right. this year. Right. It's like Nate Nadal, Federer, and uh, Djokovic. <laughs> but there is no third wheel. Like it's it, Joey Chestnut against the field. Period. Like in Rocky goes, get this guy. Move to move to Japan, gain forty pounds. <laughs> I've done everything I can, <laughs> but I gotta say, I, I, my money's on Joey again right. this year. Seventy-five dogs. But I, I did read a, a little story about the hot dog eating contest. There is a mother-daughter. Yes, uh, there is. Uh, yep. I think it's their second time. Her the goal, I think, for the mother or something is ten. But it's cool. It's like something they wanted to do and have fun and experience. I know two guys there. with the last name Monahan that could eat ten in, oh, in thirty seconds. There's no question. We yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's kind of a we're not seventy five territory by any stretch. Uh, I actually said to somebody, I think I could probably do twenty five, thirty, maybe. <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, right. <laughs> but anyway. You give me six weeks of training. I swear to God. I don't need training to eat 30 hot dogs. <laughs> I'll do 30 after the show. <laughs> but listen, there's one other thing I wanted to bring up before our notable passings was, um, and it kind of relates to it and, it, and it kind of hit home. It was a football life on the NFL Network, and it was Steve Sable. Yeah, I've seen it. It's awesome. And I got to tell you, I have a personal connection connection with Mr. Sable. I I sat and watched the NFL game in Philadelphia with him. Yeah. And we sat and talked sports for four hours with a guy that knows sports. And he was at the forefront. (laughs) Genuine guy. He was so gracious. Absolutely. awesome. I I was in uh, Robert Levy's private box in Philadelphia for... Uh, Eagles Vikings game and Steve Sable for the said, audience. Our sister worked for a guy Robert Levy, who was a part owner of the Phillies and yep. and uh, owned philanthropist the, and, and owned the horse House Buster, yep. et cetera, et cetera. And uh, you know that that's the reason, just to give the audience perspective. But I was so grateful for the opportunity. I literally sat and talked with a guy. They did a football life, and his the story behind it. He was like Charles Atlas at yeah. one point. He yeah. did everything. And his father and him were the Ed. founders of NFL Films. Yes. And it was so awesome to see. Yeah. And, you know, of course, a heartbreaking story. Succumbed to a brain tumor yeah. and everything. But, but lived a great life. And he genuinely was 
I could at, va- I could vouch for that. Right, but <laughs> like, you know, it's unfortunately I got to say I guess it's getting rarer and rarer that the people that you meet are actually the people that you meet. And he <laughs> he, he indeed was. He was and God. He was, but I, I, wa- I was watching it, and I'm, I'm recalling sitting there with him for four hours, talking football, right. and that's what Steve Sable was all about. So if you get a chance to watch that on the NFL Network, that series, there are guys that don't deserve an hour football yeah. life. Steve Sable deserved two hours. You better believe it. And his father. And the story of that football life is how they created NFL films and it, how it became about... It's great. It's great. If you're a football <laughs> fan, it's 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 great. Just like I told you that Jim Brown, a football life is, is worth an hour of your time. Yeah. This is worth two hours of your time. It was awesome. And I, I'll never forget the day I had with him. <laughs> I'm already thinking in my head as we're talking about this. like, And I'm flashing back to the 70s when we would be in front of the TV. It would be like a Saturday night. They would come on the night before the NFL on Sunday. Yep. And at like 7 o'clock or something. And it would be this half an hour show of whether it was the bloopers or uh, this, that, and the other Anything. thing. Or last week's games and, and, and the commentary. Narrated I, we, by John Facenda. We couldn't. Uh, we could. It was our favorite show. It was our That's fa- why we know. It was my what favorite. We know. Show. Exactly. <laughs> That's why we know what A we. A big know. part of what we know is from watching it. You better believe it. But watch it. It's it's just great. And I wanted to bring that up. And listen. Um, On the frozen tundra <laughs> of Lambo. Nobody field. does a better yeah. John Facenda <laughs> than me. <laughs> <laughs> the Pete Rosell Radio Award you winner. You got some ego, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, listen, uh, our notable passings before we wrap up today. Uh, Donald Rumsfeld, former Secretary of Defense. Rummy. <laughs> listen, you know, he, had his, he had his good points, he had his bad points, but he was a loyal uh, civil Soldier. servant for for the United States government, he did everything he could. And yes, I, I just that's that's notable. Two time uh, secretary. Listen, I'm a Rami guy. I understand. Yep. The lateness and, and the mismanagement at the end of his uh, you know uh, tenure, if you will. Yep. But a loyal American and uh, Donald Rumsfeld, eighty eight. Yeah. I, yep. Listen. I, I was but sick. that's a civil I, servant. The guy had no selfish motive, you know, motives behind other than serving and trying to protect the country. I, you know, know, distinction for Rummy, the youngest defense secretary and the oldest defense secretary. Oh, he was also a congressman too. At of course, years old. I'm just I making mean, a statement. But that, this guy was tough as nails. <laughs> he was a great collegiate wrestler too. Oh my God, I wouldn't want to mess with him. I nah. can tell you that. Even at 87, if you know? he took his glasses <laughs> off, you were in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> good one. <laughs> Very good. Well, listen. Um, <laughs> Thanks for joining us, and thankfully we have a short thing. But there was a, an actor, Stuart Damon, who was on General Hospital for 50 years. Ah, totally. This guy was on television all the time. Yeah. That, that's quite a run, 50 years. Yeah, he played uh, Dr. Alan Quartermain on uh, General Hospital. And I Hospital. can say I don't know anything about his role, but yeah. that's, that's notable, 51 years. Listen, General Hospital, there's many fans out there at General yep. Hospital. Stuart Damon, yeah. 84. Yeah, listen. 84. <laughs> Why would he leave General Hospital? <laughs> he lived a great life <laughs> off General Hospital. And listen, before we sign off, of course, we had to bring it up. The fact that Bill Cosby is, is roaming free today is an injustice to the to the whole system of, of justice across the world. I just, I feel bad. I feel bad that this happened. And I feel just as bad that he's roaming free. Right, and it's also a miracle that his eyesight just suddenly probably came back to oh, yesterday. Listen, he's in negotiations for a new sitcom. T- I'm so what are you kidding? I'll be appearing at Radio City Hall next Tuesday. Get your pudding pops. <laughs> okay. Hey, this, hey, hey. A, a disgrace. Oh, my I, I, God. I just, I feel bad for the people uh, that came forward, and I hope it doesn't change. Oh, my God. If this God. stuff is happening, come forward, and, you know, hopefully we could write this whole thing. We're living in a society. Yep. Anyway, so thanks for joining us, everybody. 
tons of stuff we've been talking about and enjoy the rest of the NBA and NHL championships. I think the Suns are going to win the... Uh, yeah, we'll get to the finals when we get to the finals. We but will. Back to your original point. They're looking pretty good. Yep. But listen, enjoy your 4th of July. And again, just take a moment and thank the people that, that walk hundreds of miles without shoes and the bitter cold to right. enjoy the freedoms that we have today. That is correct. We'll talk to you folks next week. Thanks again. All right. Send us an email at sports with mono and mono at gmail.com. Remember, the, the Declaration of Independence is July 4th. You know, the Constitution was at a... I know. Goodbye. All right, guys. Thanks. <laughs> See you next week.